Currently, we're in a mental health crisis. More people have died since the Good Friday Agreement than the whole of the Troubles by their own hand. What's your take on it? I think the circumstance we have is obviously disgraceful. We're dealing in a circumstance where not enough provision is being given. Uh, both, I think that just stems back from the original cultural uh, assessment from the average person where it's, it's not the same as a real disease in their mind, but of course it is. And we need a circumstance in which government gets back, obviously, and increases funding in that regard. It is just a circumstance where it needs more funding, it needs more provisions to be made, and it needs to be taken seriously on a public level. In physical health, you're educating kids from their born and conditioning them to be able to tell you if they've hurt themselves, which is obvious from when they're crying. But when they're sad, when they're getting into that, the depths of mental illness, they're getting even more lost because they're confused. They don't understand what's going on in their head. I feel like if you put the funding in, like I did in Nikki, we said early intervention helped them recognise what's going on. That makes them take the control instead of being lost and spiral into something darker. And where is a change of culture needed to sort of avert the mental health crisis? I think in Ireland? It's, it's more education of older generations and then younger generations. If you aren't educated in school, young people will always be educated by their peers. The majority of young people, anyone that we've spoken to, um, they would all understand mental health. Mo but majority older of people, people know don't. about it. Older people, older people, people do not. Ireland, yes. has, Ireland has that terrible old tradition of don't bring that talk into my house, that yeah. kind of idea. Yeah. Some might say yeah. that our generation is just a bit softer than the older yeah. generation. What's your take on that? Well, that's are we softer? It, that's exactly well, we're, we're, just, we're just the outcome of that generation. There is a theory that is proven within psychology, because I studied it. Second generational comes through, so all the feelings our families were experiencing during their troubles has changed their DNA, because I've studied this, so I know it. Who would you talk to? Would you talk to your friends, family, GP? Well, because of it? the circumstances that I've been brought up in, I felt comfortable saying to my mommy when I was experiencing anxiety, do a point, but what I'm saying is, there's children there who don't have that relationship. They aren't educated in knowing what it is. They can't recognise. They can say, yeah, I'm sad. They don't understand the complex emotion if they're down, feeling the shame. When I was younger, I like had, like it wasn't really bad anxiety, but anxiety to the point where I had to go and see a GP. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really pushed me to do mental health nursing because when I had experienced the anxiety, I felt lost. I used to be a scared to leave the house because I'd be a like I'd be afraid if someone if someone looked at me, like even walking past me straight, my earphones in, I would shake because I just was so scared of them judging me. I'd be so scared that I'd go certain places. Did the system help going to your GP, well, talking to people? I had to basically fight to get put into it because my mummy had to go through the GP, but this is what I mean, there should be creating other routes. You're going to the GP, getting referred to calm six weeks later. In my case, it wasn't a major illness, but there's people there with severe this depression is, six this weeks. This is something I might disagree with, because I currently, every day, have to take an antidepressant. It's something I'm fairly open about. It's if you're happy I, enough, tell yeah, us what you Yeah, I, I struggle with depression. It. And it's something that's been ongoing for like a couple of years. And it's not an every, like an everyday problem anymore. It's fairly managed. And the, the main route that I went through was just NHS. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to my parents, spoke to my friends, and then went to the GP and got counselling through the GP service. But it depends like also my, within yeah, geographical areas. It depends, it depends areas. where you are, and exactly. And over where we are, we're, like I would say we're depraved. You were saying about how you'd suffered from depression before. Mm. How did it manifest itself? How did it make you feel? How did it come about? And how did you end up speaking about it and moving on? Tell it's us a just, bit more. It's the way it manifests mainly, it's just sort of like every negative emotion a person can have. And that's why it can be misdiagnosed as other mental health illnesses, mm -hmm. just because they There's have so much it's in yeah, so so many things happen in common between all of them, but it's just all negative emotions are heightened, and then the positives are lessened. So it just looks like everything in life has sort of a negative tinge on it, and a lot of people don't notice that. A lot of people are just like, oh, I'm just run down. I'm just a bit sad. But when that sadness becomes something that interferes with your daily life, and how about you? Yeah. How did it affect your daily it's just, life? It's just it was like you get up for school in the morning, you just be feeling so terrible. You just you want to stay in bed, you just don't want to leave. Well, it's not, it's not you couldn't even, have made it to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah there were, that's when it, I started to realise it was affecting me, because I was like, I, I feel so terrible that I cannot go out of bed today. Yeah. And it's not even an anxiety thing, it's not like I'm worried about going to school, it's just generally in Where, yourself. Could you, you relate, like, if you were talking to a person younger than you, around the same age, what advice, what, if you were throwing the arm around the shoulder, what could you tell them to you know, get over this, get over the depression, help themselves? Um, the one thing I would say is that it's not something that goes away. It's always going to be there and it takes a while to accept that. But young people, especially young men, are far too scared to speak about mental health and feelings of sadness because it's shown, seen as a sign of weakness. 
but I would tell them that it should be something that they're proud of. It should be a sign of strength that you live every day with this mental health condition and you're still getting through it. And that shouldn't be something to be ashamed of. That should be something you should be proud of. John, would you agree with yeah, that? I Yourself as a young man, is it harder as a young man to speak about mental health issues than it maybe is as a young woman? That's so because true. Because you're not seen as being manly enough or it's an attack on your, on your, on your idea of macho-ness. Yeah, I think er more. earlier on you mentioned about like going soft. Are we going soft? But yeah. I think if going soft means that you can say it's okay not to be okay, yeah. that you can talk about and you can open up, well, if that's soft, then so yeah. be it. And Russell, in terms of being from a rural area, how, how would that dynamic change then? Even more close, even harder to speak about it? How did so, it affect you? I, so it is immensely stigmatised if you're talking like small rural communities. Yeah. Uh, medication in particular is one of the most stigmatised subjects and it's yeah. something that is, it's the sort of thing where they talk about, you know, the men in white coats coming to take you away kind of level of um, just unthinkable in that regard. So that's why I say in all of these regards, the biggest thing we have to change is culture. Yeah. The biggest thing we have to change is people's yeah. opinion and approach to the matter. Okay, Rory, would you like to wrap up then? Mental health isn't something to be ashamed of. It should be something that you speak about. It should be something that isn't stigmatized. It should be out in the open. And that loneliness, that isolation, is it just makes problems worse. I think this is the time that obviously ourselves we can see ourselves as a new generation mm -hmm. and hopefully that we can open up and just say that it is okay to talk about these things it's not a weakness it's a strength we're actually. more in touch with our emotions than we've ever been and i think that's the problem because the whole main sack of the troubles was survival it was in how you're feeling it was to live but now um, we're we're dealing with just an ordinary living the consequences are still there but not to the same extent as yeah. the worst we, so we're doing our we everyday talk about life. like we talk about political divides yeah. surely this if we just open up this is what can bring people together. If you want to come to a top table debate night or even be part of the big top table show on BBC One, email us now, top table at bbc.co.uk.